What's that story you've never been able to tell? I found out when I was 28 that my dad's side of the family had been in the witness protection program my entire life, and that their names were not what I had been told. Jesus, what are they hiding from? My grandma was part of a major drug bust in the 80s that ended up involving the entire family, and they had to move cross-country and change names. Them grandma went hard for the dough. I work at a cinema and while doing a general check that everything is operating smoothly, a peculiar movement caught my eye. This particular session was a Father's Day session for Pixels back in 2015. The entire crowd consisted entirely of fathers and their young children. Except for the young couple fucking in the back row. Poor, innocent 16-year-old me, fresh on the job, was gobsmacked and they froze much like a deer in the headlights. I couldn't bring myself to give them the old hey please stop fucking thanks so the manager gave them the awkward tape on the shoulder. Cut to the end of the film, the manager and I are at the exit waiting to see the faces of the culprits. Straight out the door, operating at some serious paces my sister's best friend and her boyfriend. Both, surprisingly, were clearly in a great mood, until she made eye contact with the stunned death canopian. No face has ever gone from all smiles to utter horror so quick. Edit, grammar. About six months ago, I was very close to suicide. I actually was about to do it. Thinking about killing myself and at one point I had agreed to myself I would end it. I got home that night and it was just me and my cat as my fiancé was at work. My cat, I think she knew I was sad, and she never sits in people's laps, sat up in my lap and proceeded to flip on her belly and play wrestle with my hand. I broke down for about three hours. My fiancé came home knowing none the wiser, but had brought my favorite dish from her work, brewery, cause she knew I was feeling down. I've never told her that was the night I decided not to pull the trigger. Just wanna put a little edit out there. Y'all are all too kind. I tried replying to as much as possible, and it's good to know there are so many kind souls out there. If you ever feel the same way I did, be sure to find someone who will listen. It can be me if you want. Or the suicide hotline, anything. Just know the world is a better place with you in it. Stay strong. It's so easy to become overwhelmed in this world. I'm glad to hear you decided to stay. I hope you are too. Thanks. I am, got a much better gig doesn't pay as much but I like it more. When I was a college freshman I tried to boil three eggs then fell asleep. I woke up to a smell. I went to the stove and the water was completely gone from the pot. So like an idiot I got some water in a big bowl and poured it into the pot. You probably know where this is going. The eggs exploded like dynamite. Scalding hot egg hit my face. It blew me back and knocked me to the floor. Here's the scary part. I felt my face and looked at the egg on my finger but thought it was burnt skin coming off my face. I almost started crying. How badly burned was I that the my facial skin came off to the touch? I walked to the bathroom, shaking, and looked in the mirror. I expected to see a horribly disfigured face but I saw egg and egg shells. I wiped it with my hand and felt incredible relief. I also felt incredibly stupid, but so what, right? I spent the next hour cleaning egg off the ceiling, the walls, the floor etc. on my face was red for a couple days. In elementary school, we had a program called DARE where a police officer would come into our class and teach us about the dangers of substance and alcohol abuse. At the end of the year, he prompted us to write an essay about what we learned over the course of the year in DARE he also advised us that the author of the best essay in the class would receive a stuffed lion, appropriately named Darren. Now I really wanted this lion. But the problem with that was my writing skills were those of a typical third grader. There was no way that anything I wrote about my time and DARE would stand out enough from my fellow classmates to win Darren. So I did what any desperate 10-year-old would do. 
Google DARESA contest winners, and then plagiarize the first one that came up in my searches. Now this was done diligently, carefully proofreading to ensure that I wasn't going to turn in an essay with somebody else's name in it somewhere. I went through unchanged phrasing or a word here and there, but by no means would it pass through Turnit. Com with less than 90% plagiarized. Confident in my chances of winning Darren, I turned in the essay to Mr. Officer, and what do you know? A week later we had our end of year reception, at the municipal building which also contained the police station. He listed the top three essays, third place, second place, and then he said holding Darren, the best DARE essay submitted this year was written by Yo Zoikuri. Come on up here, get your Darren stuffed animal, and read your essay to us please. I was so excited I won the animal it was never even a thought that crossed my mind that I would have to deliver this speech. So I reluctantly walked up, took my stuffed animal, and all I can remember at this point is shaking so bad, it looked like I was going to fall over at the neck. All of my classmates, all of their parents, and the entire local municipalities were the police officers with their full attention on me, a 10-year-old little fraud of a student. To this day, it's one of my most shameful moments, and I still have Darren sitting on my desk for discouragement from copying others' work. I was a lonely kid in the mid-2000s and I joined chat rooms like most kids, teens my age. I was a little younger than the average kid on there, as far as I knew, so I lightened up my age on them. Said I was 15 or 16 instead of 11 or 12. I never gave actual info, I said I lived in a different state, almost always gave a fake name. I thought I was clever. I mostly used the sites to either a. Talk to girls my age about life and school and boys or b. Role play chat with boys because my family was very strict and religious and I was curious about sex. I was super inexperienced and thought I could get some information or at least explore some different feelings from it. Looking back, that could have gone terribly wrong, however it was the former reason that got me in trouble. A few years after my parents found out about the chat sites and grounded me permanently from the internet, without supervision, anyway, my dad got a call at work from an FBI agent located in our state asking about me being his daughter and my email address. I had foolishly given a girl my email address and exchanged names and small talk before she asked to exchange pictures. She sent one first and it was so weird it freaked me into not sending one. The picture was so overtly sexual that I was just not interested. I forgot all about her after that. Turns out she was some 40-year-old child porn collector in a different time zone who was getting pictures from kids and swapping them around with other pedos. It was a very complicated but apparently normal thing for those types of people. My email had been found in his computer and so they had to talk to us, since I was still a minor. I didn't reply with the picture so they weren't too worried about it, I wasn't much help I don't think. I still refer to that person as a her when I think about it, or when I tell someone like myself. The FBI lady called later to tell my parents he had been found guilty and sent to prison. I don't know his name, I don't want to. It definitely freaked me out for a long time. Found an online profile of someone in another country. On a whim, decided to go on vacation together. Didn't do any communication other than email, got on 24 hours worth of flights, met up and paddled off that day. We spent 26 days canoeing from the tundra to the Arctic and didn't see anyone else the whole time. That either sounds like the most wholesome thing or the worst idea depending on how it went. It went great. 26 days was a bit long. I've been on vacation with many strangers and it doesn't always go well but this one was awesome. Six years ago, I was in spa bar. Walking to my accommodation out of town with shopping in light snow midwinter, little visibility. A guy on a snowmobile drives up behind me and asked where my gun was, they suggest you always have one for polar bears. I didn't have one, and he was like, you crazy. 
get on the snowmobile, there is a polar bear in town. So I did, shopping bags and all. Lucky me. Wonderful pickup line, so to speak. 2014 it was my first night in college, my roommates, strangers, didn't show up. We lived in a three-story apartment complex, with four apartments each level in a freshman building. Well the neighbors are partying and I get out of my comfort zone and walk outside. Outside, some guys are drinking and one of the guys invites me into party and so begins my college experience. Lo and behold, I get wasted just like many of the others. I head back to my apartment on the same level and the party has moved slightly to my apartment, but there are just like six people there. I start asking people to leave as I'm going to bed, but I'm so drunk, I know I don't care if they stay or go. I go to my room and there is a guy crashed in it. I tell him he doesn't need to leave, but please move over and he does. I wake up and freak out because I have a boyfriend. I check to make sure we didn't have sex. No, but you came into my apartment asking everyone to leave and told me I could stay in your bed and hopped in. Confused, I ask him to clarify. Dude, this isn't your apartment. Took about 30 seconds to realize I just arrived at the wrong apartment and slept in a stranger's bed, my first night in college. Imagine you're sleeping in bed and some stranger comes in, tells you you can stay, and just goes to sleep. Like, what did he think about that? Did he consider kicking? You out, or was he like me, this is fine. Now that's college. But really I'm glad that didn't go terribly wrong. My mom probably has factitious disorder. She used to gather my siblings and I together to announce she has insert cancer or deadly disease here and then make us cry and hug her. She has ruined so many of my major life events to rant about herself and all of her illnesses. I haven't called to check in on her with everything that is going on because I do not want to hear her hours long spew of disease and sickness because I always think. She is lying. She may actually be at serious risk of death from COVID-19 and I still don't want to hear her talk about it. She could die and I think I would feel relief. Edit, my mom has never been officially diagnosed with any mental illness. I don't mean to sound like an armchair psychologist. She thinks psychology is nonsense and refuses to seek help. She has purposely hurt herself for attention and she is or was heavily addicted to painkillers for a long time now. Edit 2, thank you for all the kindness and stories of shared experience. Be safe in all of this craziness. Sounds like your mother has one of those disorders where they thrive off the attention gained from feigning illnesses. Munchausen's? I moved to the UK from Zimbabwe when I was four. The first few years my parents spent their whole time trying to settle down, by the time I was eight they realized we had never been to London. So on a hot June day we went into London. We went to the aquarium, Covent Garden to see all the performers, on the London night, it was a good day. To end the day we went to Buckingham Palace, I was tired so I was resting my head against the bars asking all the questions you'd expect from an 8 year old. After a while my parents said it was time to go, I pushed away from the bars and then felt the cold steel against the back of my ears. I hadn't noticed my head has slipped through. I panicked, a crowd gathered, I'm probably in many a family photo album, even a horse guard came to see what the commission was about. Bet he wasn't expecting a child with his head stuck. By then I had accepted this as my new home, but I couldn't figure out how I'd go to sleep with the spike on the floor. Luckily an old lady had a tub of Vaseline in her handbag and my dad was able to pull me out with my head smothered in Vaseline. I like to think the old lady was the queen. I can confirm, it's always the queen. Source, live in London. The night my son was born, my wife lost a lot of blood. In an instant, our delivery room was filled with 25 medical personnel after a rapid response call. My wife was white as a ghost and hardly coherent. I stood beside her holding her hand while she received emergency blood and plasma and platelets. 
I was in total shock in the moment, until my wife locked ties with me and asked am I dying? I lost it. I'm losing it now typing this. It was the scariest moment of my entire life and I really have trouble reliving it. Eight months later, wife and baby are happy and healthy. Give birth in hospitals. You never know what can go wrong and the staff there saved her life that night. OMG! My wife almost died a year ago so deeply frightening. So happy you guys are okay. I had a chat with one of the most notorious pedophiles in my country. It was odd, he spoke in the way that made it seem like he was my age, I was 7. He eventually tried to trick me into touching his dick by buying me a hot dog and a soda. I only declined and bailed because I was low-key offended that he put mustard on the hot dog he was offering me. You're telling me this guy molested hundreds of children and served only 6 years? It happens all of the time. Every case has to be proven. Statistics Sam molester abuse is 100 for everyone who brings charges. That was in the 90s so I imagine it's worse now. There are often evidence issues in sex crimes. Among adults, it's because it's the state of mind at the time of the act that makes the difference. Voluntary sex between adults is not a crime. For pedos, I imagine it's because of intimidation and credibility issues. This is crazy, me too. He used to creep around the soccer field my team used for training when I was a kid, Gringlebot. He told some kids to kick him in the balls for 100 Norwegian kroner bill, and they did. Damn, what a nut job he was. He was loitering in an arson when I met him. It's crazy how long he was active with how obvious he was when creeping on kids. Pal. Who was the pedo? WTF. You can find him by googling the pocket man. He traveled around the country molesting and raving kids for many years. Giving us Eric a bad rap. Back when I was in high school, I wanted to approach this girl on a bus on my way to school. She was really hot and I knew I'd regret it if I didn't approach her. There was one big problem, there was a middle-aged lady seated next to her and I couldn't talk to this girl with the lady right next to her. I had to think of a quick way to get rid of the lady. I then woke up from my seat, slowly walked to the row they were seated and calmly asked the lady excuse me ma'am could you please let me sit next to my sister? Turns out the lady was the girl's mom. I'll admit, that is quite ballsy, but you really should have seen that coming. But you really should have seen that coming. Teenage brains are still developing. She was really hot and... He didn't stand a chance. What did she say in response? They probably just gave him a long WTF look and then the mom said something like this is my daughter. Then there was an awkward silence and Dob turned and slowly walked away while dying inside. Double down and be like mom. I grew up in a very conservative household, sex was never talked about at all, and you knew if you got caught with something you shouldn't you'd be in giant trouble. When I was 17 I bought a vibrator, I had literally no experience, even alone, but was super curious. The way it worked was you had to screw the bottom off it on to keep the batteries in and to turn it on. I put it underneath my bed, and thought I had it unscrewed enough that it would stay off until later. Well, I'm downstairs listening to a CD player with my headphones on, and suddenly I hear my two young sisters yelling about something and running around the house. I take my headphones off and I hear bzzzzzzz echoing through the house. My room was directly above the living room, and my floor was wooden. They're feeling out, thinking there's a wasp in the house or something electrical is about to explode. Thank God my parents weren't home, they probably would have figured it out a lot easier. One sister runs upstairs, realizes it's coming from my room, and I dash ahead of her and just throw myself over the bed to feel underneath it. I turn off the vibrator and then tell them my old phone was under there and must have had an alarm on it, which made no sense, it had been months since I changed. Phones. They don't believe me and think it must be the pipes under my room. They tell my parents when they get home that the pipes freaked out. 
My family listens closely for months to see if we need to call a plumber. I decided to take my terrible secret to the grave, and then 10 years later post it on Reddit. The end. My first BF bought us a little vibrator. I had it after our breakup and used it frequently. Due to family situations I lived in my first own apartment. My grandma lived in the same street and came on a regular basis to clean up my apartment, against my will. Yeah someday my vibrator is gone. Literally gone. It was between mattress and bed and was just gone. I never asked her, for obvious reasons, but yeah. She died a few years ago and I moved away. It was still lost. I will never know what happened to it, especially BC no other things were lost. When I was about 14 I found a slingshot in the woods. It was a pretty good slingshot that must have cost a fair bit as it had a metal frame and a thick rubber sling. One day my friend and I were on top of a hill out in the countryside and a jogger came running out of the nearby tree line. He was some distance away and below us. Without putting a lot of thought into it I shot a stone just above his head. The rock went exactly where I wanted it to, but if there was wind, or my aim was off, or a thousand other factors, I would have seriously fucked that jagger up. I muse on that at least once a week. I never see my friend and we haven't spoken about it since it happened. You almost were a Johnny Cash song my guy. Sting wrote it. Johnny Cash sung it better. My buddy had a old bowling ball in the back of his car. One day we were driving around town and drove by a large cliffside, I asked him if I should just chuck it down the cliff. He said sure. I then learned about a hiking path near the bottom of that cliff. I still think about how we could have killed someone that day. Now you re just reaffirming my irrational fear of being killed by a road bowling ball while hiking in the woods. When I was in kindergarten I fell asleep on the bus to school. No one woke me up. I wake up eventually and the bus is empty. I panic, as any 5 year old does, and run to the front of the bus and try the door. It has locked. It was parked in a KFC parking lot, so people were coming in and out of the building. I started wailing with terror, banging on the glass doors, snot pouring down my face and into my mouth as people walked by and point at me. They mumbled and got into their car and left. By the time the bus driver finally came back out with her chicken meal, the entire door was covered in my slobber and tears. She instructed me how to open the closed door so she didn't have to put her meal down. I was still freaking out obviously and didn't understand. So she sighed, put her food down and finally opened the door and asked me what was I doing there. She called the school and drove me there, still covered in snot. I remember walking into my class with everyone standing in a line and hugging me one at a time. After that day, they made a rule for all bus drivers to get up and walk the bus front to back to make sure no kids get left sleeping. Oh I love what your class did, that's so amazing. I will been scared shitless if I woke up in an empty, silent bus. Sounds like a surreal experience. The time my mom needed to go back into the house to get a scarf. Because of this we were held back and missed a bus by 10 seconds. That bus then crashed into a bridge. At very high speed because the bus driver had mental health problems. It is the closest I have ever been to death. I will never complain about my mom going back to get a scarf in my life again. Something similar happened to me. I was driving my cousin and her husband, we were all very young in our early 20s. We were at a stoplight with limited visibility when I was overcome with heat. I was so hot I was compelled to try and take my sweatshirt off at the red light and ask my cousin to help pull the sleeve. It got stuck over my head and I missed the light right as it turned green. I went to hit my gas and her husband yelled, wait from the back seat. An 18 wheeler ran the red and swooshed directly in front of our car. Her husband saved your life but the sweatshirt is the real hero. Sweatshirt and husband. An unusual but life-saving combination. 
remember when the world was supposed to end in December 21, 2012? That night a bunch of my friends and I were hanging out in my apartment, smoking a lot of weed and playing games. We made a bunch of jokes about the world not having ended. I was pretty young, and dumb, so I actually had had some anxiety about that. It felt good to laugh it off. We go on my balcony to have a cigarette and watch the sunset. Out of nowhere there is an enormous explosion, and the sky flashes lime green. We all stop talking and stare as the sky flashes green, pink, yellow, and there are these crazy indescribable crackling noises. I am stoned as a bitch and I decide this. Is it, it has happening? I go into emergency preparedness mode for the alien invasion and for some reason start filling my bathtub with water, I think it was so we do have water to drink if we were hiding from aliens and the water lines got interrupted. I am stupid. We all run around yelling and freaking the fuck out for about 5 minutes while the sky continues to strobe neon colors. So what had happened was a transformer blew somewhere nearby. No idea that this was what happened in that circumstance but due to the date, I was not the only one to lose it. My mother was out and one of her companions fell to her knees and started praying the rosary for the second coming when the sky started changing colors. Never found a good time to share that story but it cracks me up and I still catch shit for the fucking bathtub. My father seldom spoke of his wartime experiences. Ivy only heard two direct stories from his mouth. He once recounted how his brother, they fought together, was shot and later died from infection. The other memory was of his desertion. During a battle, he hurt his wrist from falling and sat there in the mud, wincing in pain and catching his breath. As he peered out, seeing all the death and destruction, he was suddenly hit with an intense feeling of futility. And not just mere futility, but he realized also the absurdity of it all. I got up and just walked away comma he said, leaving my weapon right there on the ground dot. He disappeared into the surrounding woods, somehow managing to get back home, which was nearly 300 miles away. Weren't you worried about getting in trouble question mark I asked in all my childlike innocence. He explained that things were desperate by the time he entered the war. He was underage, so he lied about his name and age in order to enlist thought. He received little to no training and was immediately thrust into action. They had nothing on me, comma, he said. I enlisted with little more than a handshake. Dot. Although he was ineligible to receive a pension because of his false and or lacking records, I am under the impression he never would be accepted such. He was ashamed of that part of history and developed a profound distaste for government. This story was kept pretty hushed in our family as we didn't he want the surrounding community to know of his desertion and labeled him a coward. I, however, always admired him for doing what he did. I nearly died at work. I was removing the main supply, 200 volts, 3p, wire on the machine we just successfully overhauled. The problem is, I wasn't aware that the main circuit breaker was still turned on. I already had the gut feeling to check the breaker, but I was stubborn and proceed to remove the wires. As I removed the second wire, I accidentally short-circuited it, creating a huge spark right in front of my eyes. First thing I did was to check my hand, which was thankfully unharmed but had visible dark spots due to the strong electric current on the short-circuiting of the wires. Good thing I was half conscious and went on to turn off the main circuit breaker. Some of my workmates saw and approached me while asking if everything was alright. After removing the wire, I took a walk and had a deep thought what might happen to me if those wires touched me. I might have suffered a severe third degree burn, or lose a limb, or died from electrocution. Folks, always be careful and always trust your gut feeling. No lockout tag out procedure in your country? In sixth grade one night I was like, I really don't feel like going to school tomorrow, so I looked up how to get a fever. I found a tutorial that said to take a bath. At the hottest temperature your bathtub will go, and then stay up all night. 
I decided to try it and they started the water for a steaming hot bath. It stung to get in it, and I somehow survived it for 30 minutes, when I was getting out I felt dizzy and then. I fell on the floor and had a seizure. I woke up and saw the blinding ceiling lights of the bathroom and the first thing I thought was, am I dead question mark. And then I threw up in the toilet next to me and had a migraine for the night. And later found out I got first degree burns. So long story short, don't he do that. Did you go to school the next day? No. Not for a week. So dot 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 success. If a plan is stupid and it works, then it's not stupid. If it is stupid and it don't s and t work, you use something from the book. If it is stupid and it works, it goes in the book. The book is just a collection of stupid ideas that ended up working. When I was just a boy I was touched when I was getting my hair cut. My father had to make a quick run to the ATM. So we were alone. I never realized it affected me that much and honestly didn't even think about it for years until I drove by the place where the barbershop used to be and just felt immense stress. I would never tell my father, he has always been insecure about whether or not he has been a good father to me, this would make him hate himself. Edit, thanks to everyone who gave me support just now, and to everyone else who told their stories below, you're a so brave and I am always here for you. I have never came out with this story to anyone except for one close friend. Everyone who supported me here has me one step closer to talking more about what happened to me. Oh boy! I'm in a very similar boat. I was molested for years by a trusted teacher, not a school teacher. But I'll keep it vague. Kinda suppressed it for a few years before I realized how it might have. Fucked me up long term. Currently trying to save money for a therapist. I can't ask my grandparents, who paid for the lessons, or my parents, who were very supportive of the activity he was teaching. They'd be devastated. I didn't want to tell anybody then, because I didn't want to be the kid that got molested. Now I hate myself because I know he had to have done it to other kids and I didn't come forward. He committed suicide a few years ago, and it was some BS reason about his GF breaking up with him. I hope someone blackmailed him into it, the piece of shit. Lots of therapists offer sessions on a sliding scale. RAIN, an organization that supports victims of sexual violence, also has a hotline and online chat if you need someone to talk to. You don't have to tell your dad if you don't want to, but a counselor or someone else you could share the burden with might make you feel better. Much love to you. I keep my sex life private role, so I have never told anyone about the one and only time I had sex in public, and subsequently the one and only time I got caught having sex by someone in an airplane. My BF and I were out at the deserted quarry on the edge of town and we were going at it when a little two-seater plane flew overhead. The plane then proceeded to turn around and fly over us again, this time dipping, wiggling, its wings when it was overhead. That's pilot for nice. Corn hub, 10,000 leagues above the sea. In the summer of 2007 I was working my landscaping job when I heard my cell ringing in the truck. My girlfriend at the time told me that they were saying that my brother is dead. Fast forward through a panic drive that I showed and T have done to my mom's house. She answers the door. And crumbles into my arms. I am stunned. They leave to the cop station and moments after leaving I get a phone call on my mom's phone. It asked the guy that was with him, that were thinking had something to do with his death. He plays stupid and wants inside information on whether or not he is being blamed. He hit him with his truck, killing him instantly. Said in court eventually that he looked at the dash and thought he had hit a deer. They had been witnessed having a fight earlier that day. Without being able to prove intent, and no OJ lawyer, he got four months in jail. We drove to a neighboring city to deliver the bad news to his nine-year-old daughter. I'll never forget the sound of her cries. My brother was. Well, my brother. 
sharing this has always helped me move on bit by bit. Thanks for reading. Edit, my first gold, silver and wow this blew up. Thank you for the warm words everyone and for the gold, silver kind strangers. I have a similar situation. My brother was visiting us for Christmas. He went out with one of his girlfriend's cousins and they got pretty drunk. My brother didn't he have a license due to issues in his 20s, so his friend drove. There was video surveillance of the friend driving the truck and doing donuts in the parking lot. We found out later from my brother's girlfriend that the vehicle they were in had a passenger side door that didn't he fully latch closed. Apparently while driving home my brother leaned against the door, fell out, and his head was ran over. He died instantly. The friend was so concerned with covering his own ass that he swore up and down my brother was driving. Because he was the survivor the cops took his word for it. I distinctly remember this guy showing up to the funeral and coming up to me. He said I am sorry I killed your brother. He harassed us for months trying to ensure we weren't going to do further investigations because it was pretty clear the dude was drunk driving. He also would Facebook message me constantly trying to get me to go out on a date with him. I was 16, he was in his 30s. Nothing ever happened to him. Even after a full investigation. I will never understand how the ball was dropped on so many levels. First, how the staff at the bar let them drive home being very clearly hammered. Edit to add, my brother had a 7 year old son at the time. I'll never forget him being curled up all night on the couch not understanding what happened, but knowing his ad died. Heartbreaking. Around 42 years ago, my little brother was playing with matches and set the woods on fire, burned about 10 acres. Everyone assumed that it was me smoking in the woods so he and I just let it be me. I took the blame, and the ass whooping, because dad was kinda rough on the ass whoopings when he was mad. And I didn't want my little brother to have to take it. Being that dad got a little carried away this time, broke my arm, we've just never told anyone the truth. You're a good brother. Edited, cause rules and stuff. In 6th grade, we had this paper we had to write, I forget what the subject was. I decided to procrastinate a lot. Then the day it was to roll around, and I had nothing. We had to read our papers out loud in front of the class. I was totally prepared to take the zero, but then I realized he wasn't actually taking the papers we used. So I decided to go up to the front of the class with a blank sheet of paper, and improvise. I ended up getting an 80. Crazy shit bro. In the 7th grade, we were assigned to read any non-fiction book and write an essay about it. My dumbos forgot, and in a stroke of genius, improvised a whole ass book out of thin air. Characters, author, plot, it was all made up. I got a 95 on that assignment. That was the peak of my life. Dude this is a sign. Write the goddamn book. Damn I didn't even get this from the story. Good call. Totally right that if you still have the paper up. I've been itching to share this but couldn't really find a place to share. I call it the inconvenient man. So here I go. I own a grocery, convenience store in a small town. So there's this man, an immigrant. Either Thai or Indonesian, not really sure but he come to my store about once a week to buy stuff. He always wear the same setup. A farmer's hat, a jacket unzipped, shorts and flip flops. Underneath his jacket he wear a small sling bag and t-shirt. Inside his sling bag, he has a phone and a wallet that is almost the same size as his sling bag. So every time he wanted to pay something, he has to get his wallet out from his sling bag. But because his wallet is so big, it's very difficult to take it out, so he has to undo his sling bag to make it easier. Then, because he wear his sling bag underneath his jacket, he has to take off his jacket and hat in order to take off his sling bag. After finish paying, he has to wear everything in order again. Also, he seems to put his money in random compartment in his wallet. 
it's not even organized, a few one, two, five, ten dollar in this compartment, then a few two comma five dollar in that and so on. It's so fucking frustrating to watch him do this every time. And for some fucking reason, he likes to buy stuff one at a time. Like once he finished buying one stuff, he'll walk out the store and return a few seconds later. Then he has to repeat the same process again. I swear to God, he took almost an hour to pay for three items. This sounds like the setup of a math story problem. <laughs> Teacher in training here. All the children I work with have classes that separated from the main school because they have slightly different educational needs. I was talking to a main teacher on the first day with my class about the students and how I should act around them in order to keep everyone calm and happy and we ended up bringing the conversation to a student, let's call him Bruce. Now Bruce is the sweetest little boy, he is so cuddly and gets attached to people easily, but he struggles with friendships within the class. As a result of this, I naturally felt quite sorry for him and so I had been spending quite a bit of time with him. Because Bruce gets attached to people easily, he stands with his body pressed to you as you talk, and he looks straight into your eyes. I felt a little uneasy when this first happened but I tried not to show it because I was glad that he trusted me so I let it continue without making him feel weird or unwanted. Now, as me and this other teacher were talking about Bruce, she mentions that he is the only student that scares her a little bit, and I asked her why. She told me that Bruce was no longer allowed pets, and once again, I asked why. Turns out, Bruce squished his poor hamster in his tiny little hands when he was a little younger and loved every second of it. I am not being rude but I wouldn't be shocked if he does that to a person in future. All the attachment issues in total and difference to ending a life can't be a good mix. Shit went from zero to hundred real fucking quick. My aunt was forced to hand her kids over to her alcoholic ex for a weekend visitation but she was terrified he'd hurt them so she sent me with them. I was seven or maybe eight. They were two and four. I thought myself so much older and decided it was the responsible thing to do so I went. While at his apartment, he got wasted and called my aunt and told her he was going to throw them off his very high balcony. They were asleep. I didn't sleep at all that night. I sat up all night, no small feat at that age, to make sure he didn't kill my baby cousins. Nobody knows. I think about it daily and wonder if it's why I have panic disorder. I wish there were better ways to protect kids in separations. Edit, I can't believe all the love. Holy shit you guys are awesome. I consider deleting this in case my cousins ever saw it but thankfully, I don't think they could possibly remember this. Thanks for my first ever awards. You are a strong, kind individual. Remember, panic anxiety is often traced to being forced into a situation you would like more than anything not to be in, causing a situational trauma with post traumatic results. I haven't been able to really tell this story since it's so strange. When I was a night shift CNA at assisted living I had a resident have a wild week. When I was doing my rounds at midnight she came barreling out of her room with her cross and white as a ghost. I asked if she had a nightmare and she responded there is a man in my room telling me to get out of his room. I peeked inside her room and saw it was empty. I was still internally set on her dreaming. She walked around with me most of that night. The next night was even more bizarre. I have a pager that lets me know if any residents need help or if any doors are opened. Well it's 2 a.m. and the front door alarm goes off. That freaked me out since all the doors were locked. As I head up to the front to investigate I see that resident with the door wide open and looking up at the sky. I asked her what she was doing and she replied death is coming for Rex I have to let him in. For days she kept talking about the angry man in her room. How he kept her up, he yelled at her, and threw things on the floor. My curiosity got the best of me. X, what does the man look like as she described and my heart sank. 
she was perfectly describing a resident who lived in the room previously who passed away, he didn't like anyone in his room. Did he ever tell you his name? I asked she looked at me it's X, his name. I asked the other workers if anyone mentioned anything about that resident. All have denied. She was moved to another room two days later after her family was very concerned for her well-being. Her nightmares have since stopped. Another resident has moved into the room and hasn't had any problems. I've had bizarre things happen to me working at that facility, but nothing has topped that one. When I was 17, I worked at a grocery store with a guy named Brian. Normal guy, mid-twenties, lil chub. Didn't really think much of him. One day he tells me about how he lives in an apartment by himself and that his neighbors are absolutely crazy. Like they would yell at him to be quiet, pound against the wall to get him to shut up, even though he wouldn't be doing anything. He would sneeze, and his neighbors would scream at the top of their lungs from next door. It was that bad. TBH, I didn't really care much when he was telling me this. I just wanted to go home and not work anymore. Couple days go by and I noticed that Brian wasn't showing up anymore. Whatever. Didn't think much of that either. A month or two goes by and he finally shows back up to work. So, being the nice friend I am, I asked him where he's been. He tells me he was actually fired because he was in the hospital. I didn't think that was a valid reason to fire someone, but what do I know? I didn't comment on that. I asked him why he was in the hospital and he told me it was for personal reasons. I tell him it was good having him back, and carried on with my day. Fast forward a couple days to me talking to another co-worker who was good friends with Brian. He says did you hear what happened to Brian? Yeah he was in the hospital and was fired or something. Do you know why though? No, he said it was personal. So this is what happened a couple months ago before Brian disappeared. He was at home by himself, when his neighbors, surprise, start yelling at him to the walls for being too loud. Brian telling himself I've had enough decides to call the police and have them deal with it. The police arrived and started talking to the neighbors for quite some time. Hours go by with the police and neighbors. So he calls the police again to ask what's taking so long. The police respond with, um. We left like an hour and a half ago. Turns out that the neighbors were never yelling at him. In fact, they were never there. Brian was schizophrenic and was hearing voices in his head. He had to go to a mental hospital for a month. I hope he's coping with this okay. I have a sister that's schizophrenic but with meds she functions mostly normally. I just wish people understood mental illness more so that those that have them can be treated better. That was not how I expected this to end. At the beginning, I expected Brian to lose his shit and kill the neighbors. Then I thought the neighbors lost their shit and hurt Brian, putting him in the hospital. I thought both of these things in that order. When I was 17 I was raped by the boy who lived up the street. When I finally got myself home I went to my dad and he yelled at me for not being home earlier, my phone got taken away and I was sent to my room, I couldn't even shower. I could never bring myself to tell him after that. I still never talk about it with anyone. There's a sub called DAR, rape counseling that has a lot of resources. Hugs from a fellow traveler. That's awful I'm sorry. I've told this on Reddit before but never in person. So I was at a water park with a girl I had a huge crush on and some of our mutual friends. I'm not a big fan of rides, she had been trying to talk me into going on one all day, and I finally agreed to try out his one really intense looking slide. Basically you go down the slide while sitting on this big inflatable thing, and it was for two people so naturally I got paired up with the girl I had a crush on. We both climbed into the inflatable, which had these little handles on it for you to hold on to when you went down. When we went down the slide, it was way faster than I thought it would be. I accidentally let go of one of the handles, trying to grab it again, and ended up grabbing her hand instead by accident. 
I was really embarrassed but she put her other hand on top of mine until we reached the bottom. I guess she thought I was scared, which is also kinda embarrassing, but it was a nice moment. She later went on to be my first kiss about 6 months later, and we're still close friends today. Back in the 90s, our neighbor's son had a dream that a treasure was buried under the huge acacia tree right by their house guarded by a gnome. The dad rented a backhoe when they dig up. It was big news, everyone in the village knew what they were up to. After a couple of days, they found nothing. The family left the village, relocated out of shame is what we all thought. A relative, I think an aunt, stayed. About 10 years ago, the son all grown up returned and had their old house renovated. That house is now the biggest in the entire village in a sprawling lot. He operates a few businesses, one of which is the only water purifying store, a huge business. In my country, in the village. Right by their gate there's a gnome figurine. Ed, thanks for the silver award. I haven't actually thought about this until recently. It happened a long time ago when I was about 9 or 10. But I recall the son was a popular kid in the village but we didn't really hang out with him because he was several years older than us. The gnome figurine had always been there I guess since the house was renovated but didn't really pay attention to it. I think it was only last year when I took notice of it, remembered the incident and put them together. Now it's hard to not see the gnome each time I pass by his house. I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Western Samoa. One weekend several of my fellow volunteers and I went camping on this tiny private island. On the first or second night, we made a bonfire and all got super drunk then went skinny dipping. The water was only about chest deep, warm and still. There was no light pollution so the stars were blazingly bright. We also inadvertently kicked up some bioluminescence, filling the water with stars. Tipsily floating naked in the warm sea, completely surrounded on all sides by stars, and close friends is one of my most beautiful and euphoric memories. I somehow expected a turn for tragedy, like one of your friends been taken away from the way, never to be seen again. Glad that not all stories on Reddit end that way. That sounds so amazing actually. I started doing one of those 5k running apps. On this app, the trainer is named Derry. She coaches you through each training session. I've never been a runner and now can do a solid 5k. But anyway Aaron told me that I've got to have a mantra. Something I can repeat to myself when I want to give up. Her mantra is you're strong Aaron, be strong. I could never come up with anything better so now my mantra is you're strong Aaron, be strong my name isn't even close to Aaron but it doesn't feel right using my own name at this point. I'm surprised how often I want to give up on things and automatically think you're strong Aaron. Be strong. Ed, guys I am so overwhelmed and touched by these replies. Gold and silver and wholesome. Oh my. We are all strong errands. If it makes you feel any better, I have a similar thing for urinals. I used to get stage fright and not be able to pee if other people were in the bathroom at the same time. I read something online and I started saying in my head. This is my toilet, I can piss where I want. Similar principle in that the toilet isn't actually mine, but it works if I ever need it. Occasionally there'll be someone next to me and I'll not hear a pee noise. I often wonder if I should share my tip or if it would super creep them out. You should just start saying it out loud. One of the first times I invited my girlfriend to spend the night at my college apartment, I went to bed early. We're both gamers, but I'm an early bird and she's a night owl. She reassured me I could go to sleep without her because, little did I know, she had plans to unlock Toad, Toadette, and the special cup in Mario Kart, DD for the GameCube. My apartment complex had very strict parking. There were only two parking passes for me and my roommate, but I encouraged my girlfriend to park in the lot anyway because I'd never seen a friend get towed in the couple of years I lived there. 
She really didn't want to get towed though, so I promised to pay if she got her car impounded. So I go to bed while she plays Mario Kart all night. Little did I realize she's an absolute freak at the game. I wake up early in the morning to find her passed out from a night of gaming. I fire up the GameCube to play some Mario Kart with breakfast. Not aware she unlocked almost everything in the game. I proudly proclaim. You got towed. Barely awake she responds, I got. Towed? Yeah. You got towed last night while I was sleeping, I can't believe it. I got towed? Yeah. Don't you remember? She frantically checks behind the blinds to look outside at the parking lot. I didn't get towed. Yeah, you got towed and towed at last night. One of our best moments for sure. This is a very wholesome story that begins with the first night I invited my girlfriend to spend a night at my college apartment. His girlfriend who's an absolute freak. Holy shit that's brilliant. Man I wish my girlfriend had DD but at least I've got a GameCube. Went to a weekend festival back in the 80s, decided to fuck a guy had just met down on the rocks by the ocean. It was quite wholesome actually, warm summer air, getting down and sweaty, cooled off by the occasional waves praying us. Anyhow, as we finished we suddenly hear resounding applause from above, look up and realize that we've put on a free show for a bunch of people sitting on a ledge. Above us. There was nothing to do but stand up, hold hands and take a bow. Not exactly a story you bring up in casual conversation. What happened with him Umel? No clue, we got dressed, shared a smoke and went our separate ways. What can I say, it was the 80s and living was easy. If you like our video please like, share and subscribe our channel. And write and comment how was the video, or if you have any suggestion. Thank you for watching.